you missed all breakfast. Good morning, guys. We're on like day four, five, three, two, or one. I don't even know what day we're on at this point. But Dudley looks a little bit different this morning. <laughs> he, grew, he grew a little bit, got a little bit bigger. We just got joined with one of the best guys in the world, Mr. Patrick James Jorgensen Lassard. Yeah, that's me. That's me. I don't know about the best guy, but most handsome in this tent for sure. Pat came out pretty late last night. We got him set up in another tent over yonder. And he, did you have a good night's sleep? I had a good night's sleep, yeah. Nice. A little chilly, but uh, it was good. Yep. Everybody heaters rolling. We got some snow coming in now. We just all drove a mega breakfast into us today. What do we have? Oh, we had eggs, sausage links, sausage patties, home fries, biscuit, biscuits. Oh yeah, it was a good old main breakfast. Yep, we had some really, really fun, good conversation about hunting with dogs and coon hunting in Virginia and hunting with dogs over turkeys too. So a lot of fun stuff. Today, we're gonna get rigged up pretty soon here to go for a little ride, get in the truck, go for another ride, staying up north and see if we can find a crappy pond, an isolated crappy pond in the woods and hit some crappy for dinner tonight. Stay tuned. Guys, you are not gonna believe this. I just went to the Johnny house out there in the woods, out back of Maine, and no joke, it's snowing out there. And a coyote walks up to me and he says, hey, you look cold. Do you mind if I give you some fur to put in your hat? And he literally combed some fur out and handed it to me to keep me warm. How was your poop? Oh, it came out smooth. There was one point I had three rest rings in yeah, it. it happened. I had to rest three times because the cold kind of tensed me up. But <laughs> right. it was it come out smooth. It good. was good. good. Everything good. cleaned up well. I'm yeah. good. No, nah, you looked right at it. Oh, it's Trevor. Oh, this guy's a great guy. What is up, Trevor? Yo, man. What's up, you? buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm rolling. All right. How's it going? It's going great. Nice. You have a good trip. So far, great. Yeah, we're going to stay a couple more days. A couple more days here? Or? Yeah, here. Okay. Yeah. I got my buddy from Virginia. First time ever ice fishing. First time ever on the ice. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's having a blast. Yeah. And my other buddy rolled in last night. How uh, how are the ice conditions? What are you finding? So T loss is safe everywhere, pretty much. Okay. I haven't got down to that last section by the dam. If, if well, uh, at the point by uh, Murphy's Field campsite. Yeah. I'm sure it would be good there, but the closer you go to the dam, of course, it would be getting uh, less. So, okay, yeah. so you're finding good ice. It's, it's like 8 to 12. This is my buddy David. David, this, Hi, David. Trevor, he's, he, runs, he runs the whole woods. Oh, no. Nice. no. He runs the whole waterway. No. <laughs> <laughs> I repair everything on the waterway. Yeah, <laughs> he keeps everything working. Yeah. So, yeah, all of T-Loss was good, round just up the edge for my money, yep. but Chamberlain's a mess. So, so yeah. I've been telling people, like, I got a bunch of messages, people coming up this week. Yep. And I tell them, if you can wait another week, you'll yeah. have a better trip. Well, if you can wait another week, I mean, it's it's not, uh, it's just not safe. Yeah. Safety is safety. Yeah. Although, uh, uh, you can't, you can't rush it. Nope. You know, so, and everything will be good. Who's, is that Kyle? That's Kyle. Oh, boy, you guys are in trouble. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You're in trouble now. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh, he's coming in after you. You're in trouble. Get out your licenses. You got how many sets of cuffs you got? Couple. You're gonna need two sets for this guy and one for him. I got, I got a bunch of zip ties. I got zip ties. Yeah. Chain and binder. Yeah, we need chain and binder for this guy. Okay. Well, good. Well, I'm glad you're having a good time. Yeah, and, uh, having glad a blast. To see you, again there. you too. I'm gonna head over to the shop. Okay. And I'll see you over there. 
You guys repairing stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sleds. Always. Sleds. We're getting new ones next year, but we're trying to make it through with what we got. Yeah. So, um, I got one all tore apart right now. So, really? Yeah. Another one just went down yesterday with a transmission. Oh man. Well, it's got 16,000 miles. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So. All right, guys. All right, buddy. Great to Thank see you, you again. Yeah. 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 Hey, okay. Be safe. Good luck. Be safe. What's uh what's it looking like we gotta move, Joe? Uh I was gonna move yeah. You wanna get uh What's it your, what's it your snow dog? Shut up. No, I'm serious. Wasn't it right there? What are you talking about? The snow dog. Yeah. Shit, you call it. Yeah. Uh, we it's, parked it in there last yeah. night. Holy crap. No, we gotta stop him. Oh. Did you guys stop? Hey, there was, who was those two guys that were here last night? Oh, that's their From Massachusetts, right I think. No, the, that's their truck, the U-Haul. But who was No, the, there was some, another truck no, came in that was, was hanging out. Guys? Oh my gosh, that fires me up. Oh, it's gotta be here. How no, much do they cost? No, we parked it in. Oh, Joe, we parked it in. I know we did. I know we parked it in there. I don't know where it is now. Check the, over by Brandon's maybe. maybe. Did you tell those guys they could try it out? No. Was, like try it out or whatever? Well, I mean, just when we were out there, I told them they said I'm... Did you, you got the keys? I got the keys. Start up. Don't switch. We can go get Kyle. We can go get him. I think he's just going over to the Trevor's. No. I won't pay attention either. I didn't notice till we were going to get loaded. I was going to say, put your thing next to the snow dog, and the snow dog's gone. Well, look, there's no tracks in here. Right? Well, this snow happened. Or is this a snow? Is this snowmobile? Check that trailer over there, Pat. Where? See if it's in the guy's trailer. I hate a thief. Oh my god. Whose is it? No. Check the trailer. That sells them. I would have. Maybe these guys borrowed it. Did you tell them they could they try it out? Borrowed. They're not going to borrow it. Whoever's yeah, they... got it is gone. Don't say that. What? Don't the loggers come in all night long? They go by. I guarantee you they saw it. No, because the the, logger, the so side cool. door was shut. Yeah, but you can look right in it. Did they take the whole thing? I the sled and all? Yeah. I Pat, what are you going to do? Because they would have the access to get it's probably small enough to throw in the back of a truck. This ain't good, guys. Somebody, we put, we loaded up Pat's snow dog in the trailer last night. And now it ain't even there. I don't know. That ain't cool. It was right in there. It was right in there by the gas can. They found it years later? Do they, do they have all the information on yeah. that stuff? I had a boat they, stolen. That's what yeah. the game warden's going to want to know. Should we report it? Yeah. All right. Let's get loaded up. We'll go see Kyle. Uh, yeah. huh. What do you want to say? I'll let you get loaded first. Pull it on the left or the right? The right. I'm surprised you didn't see it was gone. I didn't even notice. Watch your head. 
Dude, that's just leave it right there, Pat. Just leave it. We're having a rough morning, fellas. Pat got his friggin' snow dog stolen. David cannot find his wallet. I'm I'm six grand richer. Yeah. We were thinking it was in there in your truck. I'm about eight grand richer because David probably had four grand in his wallet. Pat had a couple grand in his. You would never think that in the North Main Woods. No. Ever. Jesus, we find a shovel on the trail coming out here and we stick it in the snow. They, yeah. People can get the shovel back. Can you load this one up? I'll video. How do you feel? Frustrated. People suck. How do you even start this? Oh, just life? push that. Push that red button. Hold it. Don't hit your head. Ah, uh, maybe I gotta unhook, Pat. Back her up, back her up. Maybe I gotta unhook. I don't know. Oh, push the start button in. That orange button. I don't know how he didn't see it. It's sitting right there. He drove right by it. Keep coming, keep coming. Yeah, just hold her right there for a minute. Let's re- Shut her down. Let's think this over. I don't even know. We should probably just forget about loading them up and go to the game board now. You want to? Yeah. No, just load. We'll have them loaded and just go. We'll go see them. They're just in the shop, I think, anyway. Hmm. What are you going to do? It's up to you. Load her up. I hate that. What's wrong with that ski right there? Nothing, it's just got the wide ski. No, but it looks... Okay. We'll get it from this side, Pat. Did you hit, did you hit something, David? Uh, no. <coughs> what the hell's wrong with that tire? No, no, you mother! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you suck. How did you not see that? I, I don't know. I didn't know. <laughs> That's why we're having you. That's why we're having you load everything because you had to drive we're by. Like, it. hey, go up here, do this. I'm, go I'm, up here. I'm thinking, jeez, how much money I got my wallet? I have to pay for that. <laughs> Douche man. Oh yeah, we got you. We got you. <laughs> oh, you wait. Hey, man. <laughs> Oh, come on, Pat, come on. You were sleeping and I was like, oh my God, we're gonna get Pat so bad. Your heart was friggin'. It was. You was were like, wound. Jesus. You were holding it together pretty well. Yeah, well. You were, I'll give you that. I was gonna let you guys call the game warden over. All right, hold on, we gotta put that snow dog on first. Hold on, dude. Yeah. That was almost going too far. We almost went too far with it. I don't know, what do you guys think? Was that too bad a trick on him? Might have been. Might have been a little evil. Yeah, all the way. Okay, we made it. We made it to our destination. We're still up here in the North Woods. Uh, got all loaded up, unloaded, loaded, all that good stuff. Roads are getting a little snotty. We got some pretty good snow coming down. Got a good half hour ride in to try to get to this pond that I think has some pretty cool pan fish in it. Get David on a good bite. And then hopefully there's ice. Hopefully the fish are there. Hopefully I can remember how to get in there. All right, so here's a little bit for you guys. I, of course, I'm a rookie at this ice fishing. So basically we're just riding around out on the lake on the ice and we pick random spots. So we pick, you gotta have a drill naturally, as you can see, a very, very sharp blades. And we're just basically gonna drill. You kind of clean out the hole like that. And what we're using is for looking forward looking sonar come to the hole and 
set it down. And then once you set it down, we're gonna take the stick and then we can look around and see where they're at. So a lot of this system is drilling, looking, drilling, looking versus a bass boat where you ride around and you can just look anywhere. It's a lot more work, but that's how we're doing this. Little guy, whatever he is. I had him. I think I jerked too much. Yeah. What is that? It's a little ring. Oh, you got a whole school of little rings down there. Go back and get them. Look at that. That's about as small a yellow perch as you can catch. That's talent, my man. Talent. That is. Oh, is that what that pocket's for? I was wondering what that pocket. <laughs> I, I was wondering why FXR gave you that pocket. It's the right size. There you go. Right in there. A lot of times, you can uh, just slowly lift into that hook set. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. Um, or just watch your tip. I got one coming. I thought, yeah, we're gonna have a school in a minute. He's on you. That a boy, nice. Me too. Doubled up, little guys. Doubled up, baby. Pota awesome. Potato I chips. Love playing video games. These are potato chips, but look, I don't care. I love catching fish. That was a cool double. Especially when you're playing video games with them. Nice. Good one. Nice. That'll eat. Yeah. Okay, there's more. There's more. More coming. There's more. There's more, Joe. There is more. There you go. Good one, bud. Blue. Ooh, nice ghillie. Nice blue ghillie. Your ghillie eat my ghillie. Keep it? Yeah, I'll eat them. Oh, God. Yes. Yes. Not that, that big. Nice single crappy just. Yep. That head. was cool though. Look that at that. Awesome. Yes. Wow. Choked it. Choked it. That was cool to watch, wasn't Heck it? <laughs> Thanks yeah, for the awesome. Thanks for the heads up. You're gonna have to really hold that one close Gigantic to make them look big. Gigantic fish. Oh, you went to the Castmaster. Nice. Gigantic fish. Hey, it's all about learning and having fun. <laughs> he didn't have to. All right, I'll come back. You going on the screen? Got one coming. Got him. Oh, jeez. Got him. That's got a good bend. Got him. Good one? Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, oh he's in the trail. Oh, oh. oh no. Get the trays. Oh. oh, he's over here. He's over here. No, Just no. land him over here. No. Get him. Oh. <laughs> he wrapped you. Holy <laughs> to moly. Nice one. Oh. So oh you've caught him in that hole. The rod's almost down that hole. Oh. Oh my gosh, that, that is a freaking giant. Woo. Oh my gosh, look at the colors of him. That is beautiful, gold, pure gold. Oh my gosh. Dude, that is like, that has got to be 14, 15 inches. Yeah. I don't have a clue how big that is. We can check them. Let's put it on here. Oh my gosh, that's a giant. Just 14 and a half inches, almost 14 and 15 a half. inches. Nice one. Dang. In Maine, that's, you know, I don't think Northern of crappie. Yes, Maine. Northern Maine, almost in Canada. And I don't think of crappie getting that big. But you know what he's going to be? He's Shore got, lunch. Oh, yeah. Shore lunch, baby. And this is, just to give you an idea, this is a really nice crappie. But <laughs> just to try to give you an idea why I'm getting excited, yeah. Oh my gosh. Nice. Sure lunch has been served, brother. There's a lot of different ways you could do this, but when you you get in trouble when your ax passes horizontal. Cause then if you miss or it gets through, it's coming right back into your shin, your groin, or your foot. So whenever you're really taking a whack with an ax, you wanna get down so when it gets through, it's gonna stay horizontal. So that's like, one that's point. like one, that's like one safety measure. And then like keeping that leg out of the, out of the way or swinging, swinging away from your body is always the key. So I'm going to try to take this with one swing right there. Uh, so my feet are going to be out of the way. Ready? He's lucky. Yep. Yeah, this one's going to need more than one. So three that way and 
and I'm keeping my left hand low. All right. I don't want to hit that ground. So those are the two pieces you needed, right? Yep. And then I can cut you some more for a fire. Again, a lesson from the legend <laughs> himself. Oh, come on. Abraham Lincoln said, if you're going to give me two hours to cut down a tree, or four hours to cut down a tree, three hours I'm going to be sharpening my axe. Ooh, I like Always that. have a sharp axe. I like that. You ever heard of To Build a Fire? To Build a Fire. Jack London book about a guy, he had one match left. Managed to get one fire left. Did it under a tree with a bunch of snow cover. Uh -huh. The heat melted it. The whole clump come down on his fire, put it out, and he died. Now, why you want to tell me a story like so that? So when you make a fire, make sure you're not right under like a limb like this. Because this is all the snow is going to fall on it. So we're good here. We're golden here. But like, if you were trying to survive, you wouldn't want to do it under that tree. After spending, I don't know, how many days has it been? Three, four? Yeah. Three, four days camping together. I mean, I know David. Years ago, I knew David. He kind of took me under his wing when we were pro fishing. But after the last three or four days spent together, I realized he's probably a brother from another mother. I agree. <laughs> like, I agree. We might have to go get our blood drawn and <laughs> DNA tested. And it's crazy, like stuff that might bother other people don't bother him a bit you know it's it's pretty awesome he's like sure lunch and i'm like sure thing and everything the guy does is just awesome look at this here he is he's a he's a he was the best angler in the entire world ranked number one for years took it from kvd and here he is in the northern main forest making a little smudge fire and we're gonna do a catch and cook on some northern main crappy we're gonna do it up on this rock so we don't have to bend over guys wicked smart i don't care what you guys say about anybody from down south of virginia <laughs> there's a lot smarter than they sound oh yeah you got your carrying apparatus some nice crappy there bub some goldens yes sir we got some goldies Look at them goldies. Sir. That them all? The blue guy. Oh, take that if you want to show the folks at home how we carry our dinner. A little redneck ingenuity. <laughs> Use what we got. There you go. Oh my god. That doesn't even look good. It happens. Especially when you ain't got a flat board. I know, that's the flattest rock we had. We ain't no rush. Ooh, nice skinning. You ever done this before? Mm -mm. I mean, fall eat a fish? Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm messing, I won't put that in there. Son of a... Frozen? Yeah. Do you think a Kyle might come into that pile you're making while we're cooking? I think. Do we need to be worried? I think a muskrat. I mean, um. Oh, that fox. looks delicious. He's tiny, but he looks delicious. Ooh. I caught you a delicious bass. Aren't these fish beautiful, though? The color? The, the color is yeah. what. It's and like the all the camo they got. Mm-hmm. The color is 
different. Like that yellow mm, color. Gold, we call it gold. Yeah, gold. I guarantee you there's going to be a fox or a guy licking that rock in a, in a, oh, in a week. Yeah. Or us. Yeah. If that don't come in before we finish cooking, he might be licking that rock. Um, I got you. It's a it's a dent right there. Oh, is it going in? And it's messing my pressure, mm. my down pressure up. These guys are small enough. Maybe. Well, whatever. You do it. I almost built a cutting board on that, like a fold-out cutting board on that sled. Oh, what you got there? We got us. We kept us a little perchy. Little baby blue. Yep. Get get a little fish nugget out of it. Mm-hmm. Blue. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks good. Tell me that doesn't look good, guys. Pine needles and all. <laughs> That's what we call. Don't be telling the secret. That's what we call Don't main flavoring. Don't be telling them the secret now. Old mossy rock. Oh yeah. This is incredible. Oh, nice. Good move on that knife. That's, I like that move. Well, these, this one, that's why I chose this one. This is a flex knife. Yeah. You got stiff ones. They're all made for different kinds. Mm -hmm. But with these, I wanted a flex one because of the cutting. I like that. Yeah. No, I like that move you just did. Yeah, cheating. Oh, well, if that's what you call it. I wasn't expecting the knife to come that way. Yeah, you can oh, cheat it. Look at that. God. I might just eat one. Do you eat the eggs? No. My I've old, eaten them before. But. My older buddies live for eggs. That one looks a lot bigger all of a sudden, doesn't it? Yeah. That's because he is a lot bigger. Yeah. See how that flex yeah. got down there? Mm hmm Yeah, with these you want flex. You can get that Y meat, mm -hmm. this one. Right oh, there. nice. See, your small ones, you skip out on them. This, the bigger ones, you get that. Why? Is that what a lot of guys will call it belly meat? Yeah, well, it's, be yeah, but see this? Yeah. So you cut the ribs out. Gotcha, okay. Cut the ribs out. And you get that, that bonus, um, that little bonus piece right mm -hmm. there. That little wire. Nice. You know you got good crappy when you're getting that piece in there. Ah. Yeah, I was wondering. Make him just be gentle because I don't want to ruin the knife. Oh, I, I don't even worry about it. I can sharpen. I brought a sharpener. We, we need it tomorrow. Man, what is it Ah, nah, not bad, huh? Mm -hmm. That was a nice fish. There's, there's a pile of them in here. We just got to go find them. Tell me about Martins. This is, this is what you look for here. Green forest. Their primary forage are mice and squirrels, but they will eat everything. Partridge, anything alive. They're a predator. They're in, everything's in like the weasel family, like the fishers in the weasel family. A marten, pound for pound, is the most ferocious out of all of them. They have no fear in their body. Like they, they've come after me, a thing this big. It's, it's about like a ferret. Yeah, yeah. Fair. But they climb trees and live in trees. And it's the most beautiful fur in the world. And they're like, I've seen maybe three in the wild. Not in a Like, trap. oh, really? Yeah. I, and they, 
they don't like being seen. I had one, I was deer hunting. He was so pissed at me and I, I, I chased him up a tree kind of. And I videoed him for a while and he's like, like growling and he growled himself to sleep in that tree. And then he'd do this, like a wind would blow and he'd go, and then he'd see me and he'd go, and he'd do that for like 20 minutes. I was deer hunting, so I'd just a laughing my off at him growling at me. Oh my God, it's funny. But yeah, they're like, they're a fierce predator with no fear. They're awesome. No water? I'll go get some if you can't get it to come out. Jam that knife up in there. I think once we get this. One piece did slide under the shovel. I'm telling you the guys, this guy could be an honorary Mainer. I'm gonna go ahead and make him an honorary Mainer right now. He fits in. Need a bowl, need a bucket. Use a shovel. <laughs> Cleaning I, station. It works. You got a you cutting got board. A cutting board. Whatever works. Whatever works. You got it. So this is the short lunch thing I like to do. I actually most of the time prep this before I even leave the house. So when I know I'm gonna be making short lunch of the okay. Let me show you a trick. Look at this trick right here. This is gonna blow your mind. Watch this. You see this? Push that in. Look at these tabs. Push that in. And then the roll will never come out. Well, would Did that you blow your mind? What'd you look at that? It blew my mind when I first learned that. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We are going to create a oven. We're going to create an oven. Might have a little bit of Got to get David Dudley's secret sauce that I brought with me. Well, all we are is creating a roast. So most of the time I get, before I even go to the lake, I get aluminum foil, put butter and all the seasoning and one plastic spoon in there and I roll it up. Then when I catch the fish, I unroll it, roll it back up and we're done. But we prep it. We're prepping it out here. so. Where would you look there? Would you just look there? Oven baked, ready. Mm. Thing. This is gonna be Joe's. Too big for Lay's Joe. Oh, I won't eat anything. Died. Yeah. Innocent. Got to put salt and pepper in there. Oh, you gotta get some here. If we had to, we can do it after, right? Yeah. 
Ooh, salty pepper. What you got going on there, bud? Putting a little salt, pepper, butter, keeping it simple, but that right there is the magic. And I'm not telling you what I got mixed in there. <laughs> what it is. What I'd it have is. to swear you to secrecy, but that right there is the David Dudley special mix for sure. So salt, pepper, but yeah. And we're just gonna, we're gonna create an oven with this aluminum foil. All it does is creating an oven. Oven number two. And then, three of I like your working station here. Yeah, I do. Joe picked us a good spot. He said, I know where a good rock is. We can use it over. as a picnic table, a fire table, everything table. The cool thing is, if you look right over there, you'll see the Lynx tracks coming in. Right there, now for real. Oh, I'll be back. Yeah. See how he floats on top? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Following around it. Next time he comes here, he's going to have some fish to eat. We can, we can make, uh, we can keep the fish in here and create like a little bowl. Yeah. Oh, to eat out of? Eat out of. Perfect. So we'll put the beans and the fish in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. We are, we are ready. This is gonna be my favorite fucking cook of all time. Come on baby, stay on. We had one spark out of that. That was a close call. Here's more. So we came a hair's throw away from having to go back 45 minutes to the truck. I'm not, I've never started a fire by friction and I won't plan it on it, but we had a lighter and Joe got one tiny spark. But I will tell you this, it is super important that if you ever in the woods and have one match or nothing to light or you're down to the last little spark, prepping your first initial startup, your kindling is the most important thing. And he got one spark and it could have saved our life. So one spark with the right preparation, we got a good fire. And yeah, we're gonna be eating here shortly. Do you have more to come in? Oh yeah. That was like, yeah, I'm guessing it was first. My gloves are a little. See, they're bad for you to breathe. No way, neither. Yeah, like 60% of the population is allergic to see Smart. I'm not even kidding. Hold you on. didn't know that? Dudley likes you. You don't have to lie. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't lie, but people have been allergic to see this morning. You need some more fuel for that? Some more sticks and stuff? 
No, I mean, we. I'm just trying to get it, rake the coals down now. Just get this flame. Get it down to the coals. It wasn't 100 fish day, though, was it? It's tough to me, but we done well. Oh, we really didn't fish more than an hour. I know. Right? I got 11, Dudley, counting the bluegill, probably had a handful. I had 11. But I caught the, you see that little bluegill I caught in the little perch? They fit my hand like you're eating a palm. It's awesome. Pigs are real. Push them in against those little fish. Doesn't That's it? exactly what David said. All right, we're putting them in the oven. Might have a little too much. We got to turn the oven down to, we might have to turn the oven down to 350 right now. Oven's up a little bit, see how it turned down the heat. Yeah. That's more than 350 right there. Yeah, the outside edge of it's about 450. We gotta get her down to 450. Yeah, I like to I like to get them at about 350. So. Oh, nice! Look at that, cool raking. Yep, that was your name in high school, cool raking. Yeah. We just got to rake the coals down a little bit, turn the, turn the oven down a little bit. That one right there, probably rushed it. Actually, <laughs> what do you think, buddy? There we go. We got us some gourmet beans, some gourmet fish cooked in a gourmet oven on a gourmet wildlife area in the middle of nowhere. It don't get any better than this, Joe. North Main Woods. It don't get any better than this, Joe. I agree. Good friends, good food, good fishing. I got the rice crispies going. Get some acoustics over here. Turn up the oven a little bit. Was it melting the butter? Not yet. Oh. That's not. That's what I'm I mean, saying. That's a hot fire, but it's not. You gotta have cold. Softwood don't make really cold. Well, with this though, you, you can't, you cannot get this thing going too hot because then it, it burns the butter, the oil and the fat separate. Oh, yeah. And then the butter burns and it gets a burnt, a burnt taste to it. So. Slow and steady when it is. See? That one right there. Yeah. Needs to go to the outside. We done. Too hot? Maybe. Let's see what we're looking at. See? I mean, it don't take long. Ooh. What's it looking like? Cook? Perfect. Well, yeah, very good. This is probably the coldest outside temperature you've done a shore launch in, isn't it? You got to drill to find the shore. Do you still eat those without biting? Huh? Without biting? You ever know anybody does that? <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever eaten. That's the best thing I've ever eaten. Best. One of the top three eaten fish in the state of Maine right there. Maybe behind Cusk. Maybe behind White Perch. But when it tastes that good, 
it's hard to even say it's not the best. Matt, right, Saba. This one's yours right there. That one? Yeah, this is the one this with one. the big plays in it. It's almost. Let's dump it up 10 degrees since we've been here. Yeah, quite a bit. Shoot, I mean. Not cook? Oh, no. Oh. You ready, boy? Cool, son. There you go. One lucky man right there. That looks incredible. Incredible edibles. Thank you, sir. It's the best. It's better than that fish we had the other day, Phil. Is it? I hope so. That oh, was the best good. fish I've ever had, hands down. Mm -hmm. Used to try bass. Used to try bass. Want some beans, Pat? Dude, this is so good. Isn't that the best thing you've ever eaten? Ridiculous. Makes me think, why do we ever buy stuff from the grocery store? I know, right? <laughs> Hour to catch these. Took longer to drive in than to catch them and cook them. Right. That's David, I will never see look at this I'm rock hungry. again without getting hungry. Right. Pat just said it was the best he's ever had in his life, too. Oh, really? Yep. Ridiculous. How much you selling that seasoning for? <laughs> I really do. I take... A blend of the seasonings I like, and uh, I take a blend of the seasonings I like and mix it myself. Some of it is like an Old Bay sauce, yep. blackened seasoning, white so pepper. It's ridiculous, isn't it? If you if if you were at a restaurant and they give you a taste of this and they were like, it's a hundred dollars a plate, you, you wouldn't even flinch. Yeah. Guys, this is the best fish I've ever had in my life. Prepared. Ambiance, area, so good. Location, just how the the week's been going. It's by far the best ever. Cooking it on this rock right here, mm -hmm. with a couple rocks, couple couple of rock hammers. <laughs> what you doing, playing that perch? Yeah, we gonna smoke it a little yellow bit. Yellow perch, smoke yellow perch. We gonna smoke it a little bit. Actually, it's too much in the flame. Hold on. <clears throat> I gotta get downwind of it. We'll put it in the smoke right here. Slower smoke. We'll let that smoke. So good. I wish we That's gonna go out there and catch a hundred more. I know, I would. All the earth Beans there. and crappy butter mix. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. David, tell up. Tell the folks at home, and Pat and I, where you've had some shore lunches in the in the world. Shore lunches started with me back in the mountain streams of Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia. And this was back in, you know, stock trout days. And we would just go out there and we didn't have a dollar bill to piss on. And we'd go up there trout fishing wouldn't get breakfast in the morning and it was like a necessity <laughs> we better come away with our limit if we wanted to eat it was kind of a motivational factor but probably in the mountains of virginia and then you know you you kind of tweak things as you go learn as you go you got to understand fire and how to regulate fire and i don't know it, yeah you were pro at this one holy cow Virginia is where it started at. I've had shore lunches on a lot of lakes. Actually, in a lot of the lakes that I've been to, when we have practice for a long period of time, I would do the same thing if I caught crappie or white bass mm -hmm. or, you know, extra fish. I always kept aluminum foil, butter, and seasoning in aluminum, aluminum foil. And it would keep good for days in the cooler and then when I caught crappy, it's better than peanut butter and jam sandwiches because it take 30 minutes to prep, fillet. I keep a fillet knife in my boat and 
I would have shore lunches like that. I don't do it now because we're only allowed a day and a half of practice. Whoa. So I, I don't, I feel guilty taking 30 minutes to fish, but sure enough. What we're doing here, I'm actually smoking this fish. We're putting a smoke flavor in on this. I'm not putting it in direct heat. You have to get down, try to get downwind of it and just smoke it a little bit. And that's always good too. Well, this is my first shore lunch in Maine. <laughs> How's it rank? How do we rank? Ow. The shore lunch in Maine is the best I've ever had in the state of Maine. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only yeah. one I've ever had in Maine. I don't know if there's a better fish to eat like this, though. I mean, that was so melting your mouth. All right, boys. Would you like your cookie? Would you like your cookie warmed up? Well, yeah. Or you want it cold? No, I want well, it. Yeah. And you want oh, it cold? Yeah. Here you go. No, no. Oh, you want it warmed up? Well, yeah. Warmed Smoke up. cookie? Smoke cookies. You want it warm or you <laughs> yeah. want it cold? Okay. Are these homemade from Virginia? Homemade from Mrs. Hannaford's kitchen. We got we got cookies and fish combo. It's one of the best combos you can ever have. As you can see, we were smoking some fish. We cooked some. And there's a big difference between smoking and cooking. So we decided to smoke. He, he caught a really nice ring perch and smoked it. I put my special seasoning on it. And mm, that, that'd be good. Liking it? Oh, I love it. Get you a, Is that piece for me? Yep. That piece is for you. Smoke got into the muscle. What do you think, guys? Would you eat smoked yellow perch with Dudley's special seasoning on it smoke got in it good didn't it? oh that smoke did get in there yeah, that's good, that good. main spruce wood smoke yeah all right guys that's it for the shore lunch but there's going to be more to this episode this is how you leave it too you just walk away <laughs> Drive one of them cookies into you. I just drove one in the middle. Drive another one in you. I better drive another one in the middle. Heads up! Right, guys we pulled over we got bait in Millinock and we're heading back up in the woods decided to be a lot better quicker dinner if we stopped doing this joint in town our good buddy Dave here hey, what's up? he said that this is the place to eat in town right that's right and then all the food is good all the food is good nice come on in try it come out to the sawmill and try it in Millinock all right guys we made it back it is very late we did some serious road traveling today. We were in the North Main Woods to a little crappy pond in the North Main Woods. Pat and I got served the best fish either one of us have ever tasted in our lives, cooked by Mr. David Dudley. Not only professional fisherman, he's also a professional fish cook. I like me some cooking, especially in the outdoors. I like fire cooking. I, li I like to cook, no doubt. And if it was if it was a different time of year, we probably would have forged us up some vegetables too. I learned a ton today, guys. I would have built a monstrous fire. I would have spent hours collecting wood and dry wood and built some crazy fire. And it turned out you just need a little fire on top of a rock and get those coals going and ro roll them around. And the way he cooked that fish, oh my God, I can still taste it right now. It's best fish i've ever had we're gonna have to talk him into getting that seasoning he can keep a secret but he's got to sell it he's got to sell it to the masses i don't know man that dead just like you enjoyed that flavor of that fish i you know a secret to a good chef he never tells the secrets so i don't know all right he doesn't have to share his secrets he doesn't even have to sell it to the masses but he's got to put a couple jars of that in a box and send it to maine
D drop a comment. If I get enough comments in Joe's video or my video requesting some of the ingredients. Now that bottle is me taking other ingredients, is mixing them together. So comment below. If I get enough comments, I might let you in on a secret. You got to you got to comment though. Make sure you guys comment on that. We had we stopped. Uh, we were in Melanocket for a little while. They picking up some bait, some smoke for tomorrow. And we stopped in at a restaurant called the, called the Sawmill, had an excellent dinner, met some really nice people. That's about it. We were really nervous. We thought David had lost his wallet. We hadn't seen it in two days. And we thought he lost it when we saw the lynx. We saw, thought he lost it when he saw the river. Or we thought he lost it when we saw the chaga, which we haven't even got into in this video series yet. More chaga coming up. Tomorrow we'll do Chaga, but luckily he found it in a weird, really weird pocket on his suitcase. So we are so excited because we thought it was going to be a bad spell at the airport. Now we just gained two hours of fishing. So we're going to have a great day tomorrow. We might take a look at the ghost trains. We might just take a ride in the wilderness with a snowmobile, but we're definitely going to do some fishing. And we got another guy coming in tomorrow. You guys are going to meet one of the best of the very best. Like I said, this is an all-star MVP series, and one of the all-stars is coming in tomorrow. See you then, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Night, David. Night, everyone.